Well, thank you so much, Rob, for the introduction. And I want to thank Carrie as well for the opportunity and invitation to talk to you today. Um, and today I'm just going to be talking about uh, my team and our program. So I'm talking about the Pesticide Management Education Program, and we're a Cornell Cooperative Extension Program. And we've been a nationally recognized leader in pesticide safety education for over 40 years. Um, and our effort is to train agricultural producers and commercial businesses in the proper use of pesticides uh, with the ultimate goal of reducing risk to the environment and to humans. So I'm gonna briefly cover our mission. Uh, we promote pesticide safety for applicators and consumers in New York State. And we also serve as a resource for unbiased information about pesticides and pesticide safety and that can be for anyone, um, you know, the public, researchers, all sorts of groups. Uh, so briefly what I'm gonna do here is kind of go over some basic pesticide information <laughs> and kind of give you a little bit of history of pesticide safety education. Uh, and then we'll get back to kind of what PMEP does and what we can offer you as a program. And that's our program acronym is PMEP. So when I say PMEP, that's what I'm talking about. Um, Okay, so for basic pesticide information, I think that almost everyone in this group probably already knows this, but I just wanna make sure we cover the basis here. So a pesticide is any substance or a mixture of substances intended for preventing, destroying, and mitigating any pest. And so um, for instance, your toilet bowl cleaner, if it claims to reduce microbes, then that is a pesticide, right? But something like a mousetrap, which is actually a physical, um, way to mitigate pests is not considered a pesticide because it's not a substance or mixture of substances. And then one thing that we have to be aware of is pesticides must be registered with the EPA before they're sold or distributed in the United States. And in New York, we have a separate pesticide registration process. So on top of what the EPA does, the New York Department of Environmental Conservation or DEC actually um, also registers pesticides before they're allowed to be used in New York. So I'm just going to go over the history really quickly because I think it's important to kind of couch our program and understand where we came from. Um, and, you know, my timeline here starts in 1910 with pesticide safety education, but I just want to remind you that pesticides themselves have been around for a very long time. And I think even as far back as 1000 BC, um, Homer was mentioning the burning of sulfur. Um, so pesticides have been used for quite a while. So the first regulations about pesticides were the Federal Insecticide Act. Uh, and this is basically meant to protect farmers from insecticides back in 1910. Uh, and then FIFRA was established in 1947. And FIFRA was really important because up until then, you know, a lot of pesticides could make efficacy claims to say they worked against certain pests, but that wasn't regulated. Uh, so there was kind of this atmosphere where people could get away with you know, making claims and selling snake oil. So this FIFRA was really important. Um, and then in the 50s, we saw the Delaney Clause pop up. And so this established a zero tolerance for carcinogens on foods or food additives. And then in the 60s, we started to see that the USDA funded the first pesticide safety programs. And that's when Cornell's pesticide program began. Um, And these were really important uh, for enhancing label compliance. So there were labels, but you know, the pesticide safety programs were starting to talk about, all right, we have to follow the label, right? And at this time, the first manuals were developed uh, for pesticide applicators to help train them on how to use pesticides properly. And then in the 1970s, regulations really popped up. So what happened was the Federal Environmental Pesticide Control Act or FEPCA was established and that's when the EPA was created. And the EPA uh, controls pesticide sale distribution application through registration. And so this act, FEPCA really started registration. Um, you know, there were labels before, but now there were fines associated with not following the labels. There was a risk benefit analysis uh, when pesticides were reviewed and registered. And around this time, the EPA created restricted use pesticides, which I think some of you will be familiar with. Um, so these are pesticides that only certified applicators um, can use. So they have to go through a certification process to use these pesticides uh, as opposed to general use pesticides. And then around this time, uh, extension 
was designated as the organization that would educate applicators. And then in the 1980s, we saw recertification requirements were developed. So, you know, an applicator can be certified and they actually have to get recertified and get continuing education credits um, to keep their certification. And so requirements were developed per state. Uh, and this is when the DEC became kind of a state lead agency for New York and created these um, extra recertification requirements. And then in the 90s, uh, we saw the Food Quality Protection Act. And so there were already some tolerances associated with food, but this act really uh, was more comprehensive, looking at cumulative risk on food, uh, you know, increased sensitivity for children. There was actually a 15 year periodic review of tolerances that was set. So pesticides had to be reviewed every 15 years. Um, and then in the 90s, we also saw the worker protection standard. Um, and this was meant to protect agricultural workers uh, using pesticides in the field. And then finally, we have the Pesticide Registration and Improvement Act, or PREA, which was passed in the 2000s. So that's kind of our history there. And now I'm gonna go over uh, who our program collaborates and networks with. So nationally, I've already talked about how we're involved with the EPA. Um, who's a major regulator of pesticides in the US. Uh, the EPA also funds our program through EE extension funding. Uh, so we get some funding from them. Uh, and then we also have a network of pesticide safety educators. So our program is one of many. And in fact, there's a pesticide safety education program for every state. Uh, so we have this organization that I'm highlighting here, APSI, the American Association of Pesticide Safety Educators. And this is a nationwide network. So we're talking to educators in different states. Um, and then at the state level, we work a lot with the Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, because the DEC is the state lead agency for pesticide regulations, we also are very lucky to get funding through the Environmental Protection Fund and through the DEC. And one thing I will say is, you know, the DEC is the major regulator one thing our program can offer is we are in contact with the DEC and if people are a little bit leery of talking to their regulator about regulations, right? Because I, I know some people are concerned, maybe they're doing the wrong thing and they want to check with us what the regulations are. We can kind of act as that intermediary. So we can ask the DEC these questions without telling them where it came from and then get back to you. Um, and then we also collaborate a lot with Cornell programs because we are in Cornell. Um, and one of the, I highlighted two programs that might be of interest to you. So we work with the New York Invasive Species Research Institute. Um, and also we're on the Cornell Cooperative Extension Invasive Species Program work team. And then I just wanted to briefly say, we also work a lot with the New York State Integrated Pest Management Program or New York State IPM. And we will pass you off to IPM if you ask us about management. So even though our program name is Pesticide Management Education Program, we do not identify pests or make management recommendations. So basically what our program can do is, you know, you're kind of making, you're identifying pests, you're making uh, management recommendations or coming up with ways to manage those pests. And then once you decide, if you do decide to use pesticides, that's when we can help you. So we can help you use them safely and in compliance with the regulations. Um, and so let's go over the program's major functions here. So one of the main things we do is we respond to public inquiries and we're often talking people out of using pesticides in ways that could harm themselves or others. We also develop pesticide applicator certification training manuals. Uh, and so these are basically study guides um, that applicators will use to prepare themselves for the exams at the state level. And those exams are developed by the DEC, but we also help to create some of the test questions for them. We also provide live and online certification training for New York certified applicators. We have over 25,000 certified pesticide applicators in New York State. So it's a lot of people <laughs> to work with. And they're across many different sectors. I mean, we're talking about landscape, aquatic, right-of-way, structural, food, and public health sectors. 
And so we provide training for them and I'll get more in depth on this about what, what that training looks like. Uh, and then finally, we serve as a non-biased source of pesticide information. You know, I've kind of mentioned this before, um, but we actually, we publish things, we review documents, um, and we also can provide talks to the general public. So now I'm gonna go into depth in each of these little areas so you can see what kind of resources we can offer and, and maybe work with you. In terms of public inquiries, you're probably wondering, well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, we get a lot of inquiries about applica um, applicator certification and recertification. Like I said before, we get questions about pesticide regulations. And of course, you know, the authority on that is the DEC. We go to them with those questions. Um, but we've had enough questions about label interpretation, uh, compliance, pesticide registrations uh, that we can help. We also help with safety precautions. Um, we get a lot of phone calls and emails from the public, from CCC, CCE associates, regulators, and researchers. And then we also put out a listserv. Uh, and these are updates that come from the EP federal, EPA Federal Register notices. And we also have updates on New York State registration regulations that go out with our listserv. So if you're interested in being on our listserv and getting those updates, um, let me know at the end of the talk. I'm actually gonna, at the end of the talk, I'll put a bunch of links in the chat. And one of those will be my email. Um, so you can reach out and get on the list or if you want to. And I'm just going to give you an example of you know, some of the public inquiries we've dealt with recently. Uh, we've had questions on cockroach bait labels, harvesting honey after bees have been exposed to pesticides. Uh, you know, we've worked on label interpretations, potentially illegal products. Um, so just a lot of different questions that we get. Um, that we can help with. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna move on to talk about training applicators, which is the major thing that we do. And in order to do this, one of the things we do is we develop these applicator certification manuals. And I, I mentioned before that these are kind of the training or study guides for people that are about to take the pesticide applicator certification exam. Um, and we help draft these in conjunction, in conjunction with the DEC. And the, the exams are actually based on the manuals and on the learning objectives in the manuals. And the process for writing these is really involved. We actually you know, go and talk with industry. Um, we talk with the people that are doing these jobs in these different um, categories. You know, we assess the risks that they encounter, and then we help design the manual based on uh, what we what the risk that we see them encountering and, and how to keep them as safe as possible when they're utilizing pesticides in the field. And I just want to highlight, uh, you know, we have manuals in many different categories, right? So here you can see that I've kind of separated these into two chunks. On the left side, we see the core manual. And so applicators actually have to get training in both the core and then in their category. And so we create this core manual. We also have manuals in different categories. Um, and some of the categories I'm gonna highlight here that are probably of interest to you and invasive species in general are ag plant, forest, ornamental and turf, aquatic, right of way, structural and rodent, regulatory and public health. Um, and I do also wanna mention that these manuals are kind of nationally acclaimed. There's a lot of other states in the, in the Northeast region especially that utilize our core manuals and also our category manuals. Um, and even if you're not studying for the exam, I would suggest looking at these manuals. They're a great wealth of information. And you can uh, go to our website um, to look at them further. And then you can actually purchase them through the Cornell store if you're interested in um, learning more about the manuals. Okay, the other thing that we do is we actually do recertification training. So once someone's certified, like I said, they have to... Uh, have these continuing education recertification credits to keep their um, certification. And so this is in the form usually of talks or workshops or in, uh, in the case of COVID-19 more recently, it's been a lot more uh, online trainings. Um, and so we can do live and online trainings and we're often invited to those presentations throughout New York State. Uh, we go to recertification days, you know, courses and workshops that are already hosted by other people and we're invited to those talks. And then we also actually work on two different workshops. Um, one of them is the right of way pesticide applicator recertification workshop. 
So this is co-organized by the Category 6 Committee. And this workshop focuses on overall vegetation management. But we do often have in, uh, well, not, I guess, every once in a while, we have invasive species talks at this right of way workshop. So one of them, uh, and one of them, Rob Williams spoke about identifying invasive species. We also had talks on Phragmites and Phragmites management in the Adirondacks um, at this workshop. And the other workshop that we host every year is the Ronald D. Gardner Food Processing Pest Management Workshop uh, with structural pest management sessions as well. And this covers quite a few different things, um, anything from you know, exclusion of rodents um, to uh, you know, grain pests and fumigation of those pests um, to removing bees from structures. Uh, so a lot of different topics are covered in these workshops and we can put invasive species topics in them um, if they're of interest. So I'd love to hear your input on that. Um, and then finally, some of our training is online. So we have this, we have many online recertification courses and this is through our distance learning center. And so these are, uh, we offer quite a few different credits through this center, uh, both for category and core topics. Uh, as I said before, they're intended for recertification training. And so there's many different examples. I've highlighted a couple here, but you know, we cover a lot of different topics, anything from kind of core topics like toxicity of pesticides um, to protecting water from pesticide pollution, we also cover things like Asian soybean aphid. Uh, we have three courses on bed bugs and fly control and berry farms. We have courses on management of grape berry moth and herbicide resistance. And we also have courses on more technical things um, like you know, nozzles and use of nozzles for pesticide um, application. And so here I've got a list of different courses that you can see, these are just highlights. Um, but one of the ones that might be of interest to you is the spot and lantern fly course. And these courses, the content is actually developed by people that we partner with. So the spot and lanternfly course was actually, the content was developed by the New York State IPM program. Um, and then we help make sure that that's available for recertification and online. And these actually are available for recertification in multiple different uh, Northeast states. So you know, if you are doing uh, pest control across different states, you can actually get recertification in multiple states at once by taking our courses. Um, so I would really like to offer to the group, if, if you go look at our courses and you see a gap and you think, oh, there really should be a course on this invasive species topic, let us know. You know, we would love to work with you to create that course. And then finally, we serve as a non-biased source of pesticide information. Um, and so I'll just kind of highlight some of the things we do. Um, we produce the Cornell crops, uh, the Cornell pest management guidelines. So these are the crop and pest management guidelines. And um, the guidelines are actually produced by Cornell researchers. So the content's written by them and we help produce them um, we don't actually make the management recommendations that are in here, but we do review them to make sure that uh, all pesticide related information is compliant with New York state regulations. Um, and, you know, the registered pesticides in New York change every year. So every year we're updating these things. Um, and then we also review Cornell documents for pesticide recommendations, and we ensure compliance with New York state laws as well on those documents. So here's an example in the middle here of a biofungicide blog article that was produced by New York State IPM. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you can see this guide that we co-authored, a pesticide decision-making guide to protect pollinators in tree fruit orchards. So we also reviewed pesticide recommendations um, and has said information to make sure it was accurate in that guide. But I think what will be most important for your group is our presentations. I already talked about the presentations we give to applicators, but we also give a lot of presentations to the public. And I think this is something that would really um, benefit your group uh, because we can serve as that non-biased source of pesticide information. So I'm just gonna give you a kind of a brief overview of the many different topics that we can talk about in our presentations. Um, 
So we cover anything from applicator safety, uh, proper pesticide use, pesticide regulations, label comprehension, identifying legal pesticides. You know, there's definitely legal pesticides out there that you have to look out for. Um, hazard versus risk, managing drift. Recently with COVID, we've given a talk on antimicrobials and how they relate with COVID-19. Um, how to select a pesticide. We also have talks on basic pesticide training for master gardener volunteers. So just a really a wealth of topics, I would say. Um, and you know, we can also kind of develop a custom talk for you, uh, depending on where that need is. Um, so an example would be that we gave a talk about pesticide registrations for invasive species uh, in New York State to a PRISM group in the past. And another example is this current talk, which is getting a lot of um, demand, which was developed by our program. And this is about hazard versus risk. Um, using glyphosate as kind of a case study to talk more about um, how hazard and risk are assessed uh, by the EPA. And so, you know, if there's a current topic that comes up or something about invasive species or you know, there's something that you think your group would really benefit from, or you have questions about pesticides, um, please reach out to us and we can help develop a talk for you. Um, or you can just come in briefly and answer questions. I'm really open to a lot of different things. So in summary, I'm gonna go over kind of the ways that PMAP can support invasive species management. And I think the main things we can do is we can conduct those presentations for pesticide applicators about safety and pesticide use. Um, we can speak to the general public on pesticide related topics. We can help identify pesticides for invasive species management. Uh, we can provide education on special pesticide registration options for invasive species. And I didn't really talk about that much, but uh, we can get into that. Uh, you know, I'm talking about things like special local needs. Uh, we can kind of help walk you through those different registration options. We can answer questions about pesticides and their use, and then we can help to develop online recertification courses um, that address invasive species. And so what I'm going to do now is um, copy these links here. Oh, wait, let me <laughs> go back. All right, so I'm gonna go over these resources really quickly, and then I'll copy the links when I'm done with this presentation um, and put them in the chat. So I would encourage you to contact me, uh, that's my email. Then there's also the staff contact page, and this would be really important. If you have a question, I would go to the staff contact page first and see who on the staff might be the best expert for you to talk to, because we all have our different expertise. Um, and then we also have a COVID-19 page. Uh, so that might be something of interest for right now. And then we have basic pesticide awareness fact sheets. And there's one that I highlighted here. This is what is a pesticide, but we have what is a pesticide, we have hazard versus risk, and we have a fact sheet about how pesticides are registered. Um, and these are really great for all, I think all different levels of awareness. Um, so, you know, they're kind of targeted to the general public, but I think it's really good to get this information regardless of where you're at in your career with pesticides or, or how often you work with them. Um, so you can get those fact sheets at our website as well. And I think with that, I am done and I'll take any of your questions. Um, 